welcome to Great British Ghosts. Later on, I'll be visiting the 900-year-old ostrich inn in Berkshire. But first of all, I've come here to the beautiful West Wickham Park and I'm going to be heading underground to the notorious Hellfire Caves. West Wickham Park has been in the hands of the Dashwood family for centuries. The main house sits in thousands of acres of landscaped gardens, lakes and follies. But the estate is most famous for the infamous Hellfire Caves that were built under a hillside facing the house by Sir Francis Dashwood back in the 18th century. The caves played host to a secret aristocratic society called the Hellfire Club, made up of some of the most powerful men of the day who were rumoured to have practised all manner of black magic and satanic worship up there. Not surprisingly, the caves are reported to be haunted. The estate's current owner, Sir Edward Dashwood, rarely gives interviews, but agreed to sit down and talk to me about his infamous ancestor and just what went on in the caves. So what actually happened in the Hellfire Club? What did they actually do? Yeah, there's lots of rumours, and, and particularly in the 19th century, so 100 years after the event, um, all sorts of Victorians were horrified about what they thought they got up to and wrote lots of, of stories of um, blaming them for all sorts of nefarious deeds. Um, they, they had great fun, there's no doubt about that, so I think there was an element of jo jocularity about most of our antics, but equally they did take things like religion and, and, and astrology very seriously. Um, the room above the one we're sitting in has all the ceiling covered in Masonic symbols and um, architects' devices. Um, so they were interested in all these elements of life um, above and below ground and th there's no doubt that um, they, they I, th I think they probably, I don't know, I mean they had ladies there, they drank, we have the cellar books so we know exactly who visited, we know how much they drank and they drank quite a lot in those days. You couldn't drink water because it was unpure, it would make you ill. So they were very happy to use that as an excuse to drink lots and lots of wine. I suppose then, if he was that sort of character, maybe he fueled the rumours and quite enjoyed doing that. I don't know if he, he did, but he, I mean, he certainly had fun, but I think ever since, no, no one's ever wanted to dispel the rumours because you know, they are quite fun, they give a bit of excitement um, to the area. We have, have lots of different sightings of people who, who think they've had paranormal experiences or they've seen ghosts and, and these sort of things. And, and they've all been quite, quite pleasant experiences. They haven't been sort of terrified out of their life. Um, one of, one of the, the most amusing and recent ones was, was a, um, and I probably shouldn't be saying this on camera, but there was a late lady about 20 years ago who went down the caves as a visitor and she'd, she was a, a spinster and she'd been frigid all her life and had no sexual experiences. And she said she was a, attacked by the evil spirit of my ancestor when she was down the caves and came running out and, and was completely shell-shocked and it turned her into a raving nymphomaniac. <laughs> Um, all because of this experience. Now this was probably just a publicity stunt, I've no idea, but anyway, she got a minister in the, in the area to denounce the case and to denounce the, the satanic influence of my ancestor at work. Um, and this hit, hit the front page of the local papers. And of course, no doubt, guess what happened? We had thousands and thousands of middle-aged ladies going down trying to rejuvenate their sex lives in the caves. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> So now I had their history, it was time to see these infamous caves for myself. And one of the guides, Lisa Sheeney, agreed to show me around. Well, this is the first tunnel that leads off the entrance tunnel. Um, and this is where most of the staff have heard footsteps on the gravel when they've been in the office in the evening, getting ready to close up. And are they like heavy footsteps? Yeah, they're like, just, you know, they're an adult's footsteps, you know, that you can really hear them very, very clearly. Um, and yet you know the caves are empty, you know there's nobody there. There's certainly an atmosphere in there. Um, there's something in there that, that uh, it's a presence of some form. I mean, I haven't personally seen anything, but I've certainly had lots of different experiences of odd things happening. Um, Frequently you hear footsteps behind you um, and certainly on the gravel you look around there's nobody there and you do try and work out some sort of logical reason for it and think well it's an echo but at certain times you just know that's not the case that there is something down there so yeah you do get certain days where you feel someone's watching you um, if you're down there working doing different things you do sort of look over your shoulder quite frequently. 
Have any other ghosts been seen in this bit? Well, we're coming up to Paul Whitehead's um, uh, cave here. And um, again, the little paranormal groups that come here, they have been saying that um, this area records a, a cooler um, temperature than anywhere else in the caves. And yet it's quite near the entrance, so it doesn't really make any logical sense that it would do that. Um, so here we have our Paul Whitehead. <laughs> he doesn't look so well, does oh, he? Oh, yes, bless him. Well, he's, he's been here a long time. Now, Paul Whitehead was the, the poet of the Hellfire Club and, and the chief steward, and uh, his heart was taken out and was actually placed in, a, in an urn in the mausoleum on top of the hill. And the story goes, and, and, and I have no reason to, to disbelieve it, that it was removed by some Australian visitors about 100 years ago who broke into the mausoleum and actually stole, stole his heart um, from, from the mausoleum. And, and ever since then, people have believed they have seen him either in the caves or walking around the hill, sort of you know, holding on to his where his heart should be, so looking for his heart. Now, believe that as you may, but, but, but people, people like to believe that they've seen Paul Whitehead, or seen his ghost at least. Do we, do we go further? Yeah, we we'll carry on around here. We're going around the circle now. And this sort of comes round on itself, and we come down to this next stretch. These are amazing, these it's just It's incredible, isn't it? It's just an amazing uh, structure, really. So we come into this amazing cavern called the Banqueting Hall, and this is where all the partying really happened. It's just oh an amazing... My word. It's incredible, isn't it? It's this wonderful. is absolutely amazing. It's a 40-foot cavern. I mean, it's just an incredible space um, to have a party in. And these areas here where the alcoves are um, could be representing sort of the points of the compass or there's so many different theories. But there was also the legend that they had curtains across here in the days of the Hellfire Club. And this is where the friars had their private devotions. <laughs> what does that mean exactly? It involved, it involved the lady visitors. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so, yeah. but I had no idea it was going to be quite so big. So, I mean, this is dug out by hand. Yes, I know, it's amazing, isn't it? Well, there are two main haunted characters. Um, the first one is of Suki. Um, she was Susan, who worked at the Georgian Dragon pub um, down in the West Wickham um, village. She was very attractive by all accounts, quite a flirt she was known as, and the local boys had all tried to get to know her a bit better and she'd rebuffed them because she'd really wanted to find someone that was uh, wealthy and take her away, whisk her away to this wonderful lifestyle. But where West Wickham um, Park is located, it was on the main coach route between London and Oxford. So a lot of wealthy people did come through and stop here on route through. So she got to know one chap and obviously got a, took, her, took her eye and um, she decided that that was the man she was going to go after. Um, the local boys got very, very jealous and they decided to basically teach her a bit of a lesson and they sent her a message to say that this chap had actually asked to meet her at the caves. Um, but to come wearing a wedding dress as they were going to run away together and live happily ever after. So poor Suki got dressed in this wedding dress, went up to the caves um, and went through um, in the dark trying to find her beloved and in the caves with a group of boys that were playing a trick basically waiting for her to arrive. She got very frustrated and threw a hand of gravel at them um, and they retaliated by hand, throwing handfuls of gravel back and unfortunately there was a, a rather large stone amongst them and it hit her on the head and she died. This is where she was, you know, she met the local lads and, and met her death. Um, so she, you know, she fell in this room and this is where, again, screaming of help has been heard and, you know, the, the uncomfort of, of a feeling of someone that's obviously met a very tragic end. A terribly sad story. Okay, we're about halfway now, so uh, we've got a bit more of a journey to go yet. And this is obviously getting deeper all the time. Yeah, because you're going downhill all the way. So we're going, eventually we're 300 feet from the, the top of the, uh, the church. So it's quite a nice <laughs> depth down again. Now we've got here, we're at the triangle. This is where we are. Um, and this is where it splits again. And it is, again, theories of whether men went one way, women went the other. But this is where our Suki was seen recently, um, down at the bottom of the tunnel here. And it's just an interesting picture because you think, well, there's no light down here, so how on earth did that picture come about? But certainly the, the lady that was here that took the picture said that she saw the, the white dress disappearing around the corner. So she's really you know, she's walking in the tunnels. <laughs> so here we go. So 
now we're going out towards the, uh, the, the final sort of tunnel now that leads through to the, the river Styx and then we're going to cross into the underworld of the inner temple. So this is the River Styx and this is the natural water level. This is where in the days of the Hellfire Club they would have had to cross with a boat. Um, obviously now we've got the bridge here to make it a lot easier, you don't get your feet wet. But uh, yeah, in the days of the Hellfire Club that would have been part of the ritual to come through to the Inner Temple which is where we're heading next. So th as legend goes, we cross this, the River Styx, and we go into the underworld. That's it, yeah, this is the, this is the final part. This is the heart of the caves where you know, the real sort of crux of the meetings happened. So this is where it all, it all really went on. Originally it was a river, so you had to cross the river to get to the famous Inner, inner Temple where all these so-called nefarious deeds happened. Um, and there was a boat there, and there used to be a, probably a villager, I suppose. It was all a bit of a charade even in those days, but there was a villager there who, who would have taken you across and you were meant to give him a shilling to take you across, just like Karen. Karen was the boatman in um, mythological times who took you across to the underworld. Um, so my ancestor was trying to sort of recreate this idea of going, going down to the inner temple. So this is through to the inner sanctum. This is it, this is where it all happened. This is where the meetings all took place. And although we're showing a party scene here, again, a lot of paranormal groups have said that they've had a feeling there's an altar in here. So it makes you wonder if the rituals and everything went on in this room. One that I love the most, my favorite story, and I can't work out, find out exactly where it all came from, but it was a, a story that I heard that in 2001, when the water rose, this flooded. And when the water actually, actually drained away and they came in to work out what needed to be repaired, the weird thing was a couple of the mannequins had fallen forward and where they'd fallen forward, the hands had churned as if to save themselves as they'd fallen forward. That's creepy, isn't it? <laughs> is I that love that true? story. Well, apparently it is. It's again all in the do documents of the staff that have worked here. I think it's a state of mind. They want them to be haunted in the first place, whether they are or not. And, and it has the right sort of atmosphere. You, you're underground, it has amazing acoustics. Um, a lot went on there, so they're not just natural caves. They were dug by humans. There's lots and lots of history to them, lots of parties, lots of revelry. So, so all the ingredients are right for them there to be a ghost down there. And I think people like to believe that. And, and if there is, there is. And if there's not, there's not. But I think it's exactly the right sort of place to find a ghost. Well, the Hellfire Caves sound like they should be haunted, but add to that the image of a pretty young maiden who was murdered in her wedding dress and stories of a secret society that did satanical rituals, all happening beneath a mausoleum with an urn of a human heart. Well, it's not really surprising that there's a lot of paranormal activity around here.